Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Great Wizard Bukake, your host. The Damarian Massacre has turned out to be the first sign of a conspiracy. Butthole and Quinny were off preparing for other conversations, while Reginald spoke with Bucky before joining Juniper at a crime scene and discovering someone is trying to frame Vint and Charlemagne. Can our heroes figure out who is behind these killings before it's too late? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons. Quinny, you awake refreshed from your warlock nap. We all know warlock naps are important. Yeah. We know those spell slots go away real fast. They do. But thankfully they come back pretty fast too. Yeah, <laughs> having had a sufficient amount of rest, uh, you are ready for your big date slash honeypot situation slash maybe have to deal with an assassin uh, situation with Vinton Charlemagne. So though Reginald and Juniper have been making some discoveries uh, over at the crime scene, Quinny, you are unfortunately not privy to any of these. Now, we the players are aware that there are a couple of letters that Ryan has written for you but told none of us the contents of that do exist that are at the palace, but It'll be kind of up to you whether or not Quinny would go to the palace or whether he would make his own preparations and go to Seaventon at the. Uh, say, he the is Marian sleeping in Juniper's Sons. room in the palace. Oh, yeah. that's correct. I'm sorry. I yeah. thought he was at. Yeah. Uh, I always assumed he was in Gary's apartment. No. I just always think no, of the most tragic it. place he could sleep, you know? It's, uh, no, Juniper was worried about. I slept his in safety. Crime Alley. So. Just covered in pearls in Crime Alley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So, and Juniper similarly had to get talked out of sleeping in a grove. So, like, you know, we're all learning <laughs> from each other. Yeah. We're just paying it forward. So, Quinny, you 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 awake in, in Juniper's room. It's a bit strange, but it's admittedly very nice in there. So, you're yeah. you're, you're feeling good. What kind of preparations do you take before you go to the uh, Vasa embassy? Uh, I mean... Resting to get the spell slots was like a big part of the preparation. Uh, other than that, I assume I have all the information I need of a warlock killed this guy. Uh, and uh, we only know one warlock. So I'm going over to Vinton's place to um, kind of question her, but also keep up. Yeah. Romantic appearances. Yeah. Excellent. And so I'm going to come back um, to her with a gift, right? Oh me. God! Yeah. Okay. It's, right. It's, it, it, Thank it you. Been it's been a minute. It's been so. a minute. Great. I did ask for that. That's right. Yeah. If that has been provided to this room, or if I need to go down to uh, like the quartermaster to get it all. <laughs> no, there's only one one person who could hook you up with with such a thing who would know where such things are. I, who's that? <laughs> oh, hey there, Quinny. Oh no! I, you, you you asked for some gift wrapped. What what's what's the story on this? You got some celebratory shenanigans afoot? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, so you, I'm assuming you know about it. So do you have something for me? And she just holds up a Homer Simpson attempt at rapping thing. So it's just like very badly. It's, it's somehow all spikes and angles. You know, she somehow folded the paper. It's sort of a, a Lovecraftian origami of, okay. of just like bad angle. Like looking at it hurts your sanity, but oh, it has a bow on it, and you know she shakes it, and you can hear the the telltale jingle of all the the clasps and buckles. So you know that okay. you know she's brought you the correct item. All she's right. just wrapped it like the maniac she is. I just I just want to grab it from her and go back to Juniper's room to put this thing on. I just want to <laughs> take it. Okay, well you you let me know if you need anything else. Should. Should I start requisite? Should we put some more orders in, or what? What's going on? Is this kind of a one-time deedy? We don't this have is a lot enough. of these in a car. This is fine, thank you. <laughs> okay, I mean, you're the minister of culture. I guess if this is going to be our new thing, we should really it's get not, some more orders. We don't even in. need to talk about it. No one else needs to know <laughs> no, about I'm it. No, I'm gonna it's... go tell Ann about it. Oh my fucking god, I'm gonna kill you. Um... <laughs> they love you too, <laughs> you little bastard. That <laughs> she she goes off on her way. Great. Uh, I uh, I go to uh, Juniper's room, um, <laughs> unwrap this crudely wrapped gift. Does everything appear to be in order? Yeah, I mean, the the nice thing about, as we've kind of talked about with the Akaw marketplace, the good news 
with kind of taking over a conquering nation like this is they have the best stuff from everywhere, not because they traded for it, but because they looted and pillaged it. So just took it. This is some proper top of the line, off the back of a truck style uh, fuck harness. Um, there we go. The yep. Let's call it what it is. Yep. yep. Yeah, we, we established oh, wow. that. You know, the, yeah, well, I think we the Quintech was thrown around a while back. Uh, so, yes, this is, this is you know, a luxury brand. You know, it's it's fancier than the one uh, that you're used to from uh, the Oasis. <laughs> you know, don't go to the one fuck one time. And stick to the rivers of the lakes <laughs> yeah. that you're used to. Uh, so, no, this, this, this looks great. You know, if you're trying to make a good impression on a warlock who may or may not have assassinated someone uh, yeah. under the auspices of diplomatic immunity this is a good way to do it i look at it you know i say oh <laughs> it's uh yeah nicer than the one i had hope she likes it and i will just uh disrobe and make this the first layer that i have on and then put everything else back on i'm glad we sorted out the cloak situation so this can just happen because i feel like that cloak really could have fucked this up for you in a variety <laughs> of ways Excellent. Yep. So you, and I assume you're just wearing your, your standard, standard adventuring gear all, or all my gear goes back on over top. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you don't have like a downloadable content skin of you in a tuxedo or something like in the Resident Evil games. You're just, I did not ask for a tuxedo. I don't think we've got one for fair. me. No. Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. Great. And, and right. two letters had been slipped under your door. If you would look for them under the he door. Is in the palace. Yep. Fair enough. Sure. I, I mean, yeah, I've crossed the threshold twice now, once out to find this package and back again to change. So yeah, I probably spot those and pick them up and open up those letters. What am I, uh, what am I reading? Ryan, or I'm going to say that you left the second one after there's a time lapse between those letters. After he talked to Bucky. So Quinny, theoretically, a short rest takes what a couple of hours. I think one yeah, hour I, is I, the I'd say both, minimum. Yeah, you could for a short you could rest. deliver both those letters. That's fine. Cool. Um, the the first letter that you open is a beautifully scrawled script on a folded piece of paper, and it just says, oh, "Dearest Quinneth, to use your historically based name." Quinneth. A few quick thoughts for you before you go have your sexual adventure. First, I know you can done talk to the animals. And though Fenton may be quite clever, I doubt the Wyvern would be able to keep the same secrets if they done did murders together or traveled around. So think on that. A question for you about your own past. Did you tell Vintage Charlemagne about the Damarin attack before they done attacked? If so, you honey potted yourself and done made this possible. <laughs> if you didn't mention tomorrow, then how'd you know? Might be a thought in her favor. Keep on done thinking. Get your pot ready. Goodbye. That's just signed Reginald. <laughs> It's not smart Reginald. It says smart, smart Reginald. Reginald. That's what he signs as. It's like, keep on done thinking. <laughs> he just folds it up. He thinks about the questions being asked. Uh, and I'm, we've recorded the episode a while ago, but I am going off my memory that I did not say it was Damarin. I said there was an attack that she was the target of an assassination, but I did not say which governing body or nation or anything like that. So Quinny that's how Quinny recalls it is like i don't think i told her anything like that just that she was a target of an assassination yeah yeah okay so that's fine i didn't honeypot myself which is good the second and, letter uh, is folded and slightly smaller yeah uh and i i think to myself of uh my beast speech ability given to me by my patron that gives me the ability to freely cast speak with animals and i don't think a wyvern is an animal I don't think it's classified that way. You did attempt to speak to Chompy. Yeah. Uh, Chompy is not an animal. And thus all you got were the, the sounds of, of just oh, a wyvern. Wyvern just, sounds, monster yeah. sounds. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So I, I, but I, yeah, I remember that. And I think to myself, okay, well that's not going to work, but that's, he doesn't know how that, that's how that does. So that's fine. Um, hmm. There's a medallion of thought though. Well, maybe, maybe there's something there. Maybe we can use a medallion of thought on Chompy or 
if I'm feeling real gambly, we can try and use it on Vinton, but I, I don't know. Anyway, and I'll open this second letter, see what's going on in there. Dearest Maestro Brownborough, it is your Brown friend, Burra. Smart Reginald. I have discovered some other information that I think may be of use to you. There's a crime scene outside of town where the DeMars have been massacred, son. They done got massacred. Also, Fallon Meyer Pink Blossom is secretly a harper. Only you, I, and Bucky know. I don't think he knows quite what a big deal it is. He told me real fast. Apparently, Fallon Meyer Pink Blossom believed Bucky wouldn't tell nobody. So, no, she's a harper, but she ain't too smart. Well, fondest regards from the front lines. Smart Reginald. Front lines. What is it's like checking the back? Of the, like, what is he talking and you, about? You flip to the back and it yeah. says front lines of an investigation. I knew you'd look. <laughs> oh, he is smart, Reginald. All right. He folds it up, puts it away. <laughs> Valmeyer Pink Blossom is a harper. Does Quinny know much about harpers? Uh, go ahead and roll me a history check, please. Well, I'm going to say no. Uh, that's a two plus history. Uh, so a total of three. Well. Oh, she plays a harp. I don't see why that's a big secret. Uh, Quinny, the only thing you kind of know about the, the Harpers is that you all were briefly, I believe, inducted into them a long ass yep. time ago. Technically, uh, we're all members. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not Juniper. Juniper not. not Juniper, Alan. no. <laughs> Alanis. <laughs> but in your earliest adventures, almost as though in a some kind of, I don't know, starter set that was insistent on introducing the characteristic of major factions. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The dragon cult, too, I think. Yep. There were, there yeah, were a yeah. whole bunch. But yeah. yeah, you would know basically just that I think to Quinny of that era, bunch of do-gooders who are going to ask you to do things for no pay. That's what they would have seemed like. That's probably what they seemed like at the time. And I think that's probably why you just have a a frame missing in your head hmm. of what these these people are. Because you're just like, I don't fucking care about that. That's not stealing. Yeah. Sounds terrible. So, no. It, it, and also, you're not really sure why that this would be such a big deal. Because in theory, you are all like apprentice harpers yourself. So, right. Meh. Uh, she's a harper, but she wants. Why do the th- only the three of us know that? Why does it matter? I mean, she she wanted it kept a secret, apparently. So what are the Harpers investigating us then? What if, what the fuck did we do? <laughs> Slow no. pan to the nation you conquered. Slow <laughs> pan back. Yeah, Quinny's like back to Quinny the pan, and he's like, no, I don't know what we did, and he just falls off the table. <laughs> like, That's bullshit. Um, <laughs> And uh, he's gonna he's gonna head out. Um, he's gonna head down to the kitchens uh, to grab um, grab some uh, a hock of meat, like a ham hock or something like that. It was yep. a nice oh. nice treat for Chompy. So figured we're going to make nice with everybody. Everybody gets yeah something. I gotta ask, do you? <laughs> everybody gets some meat in one way or another. <laughs> there you go. Hog in some cases, <laughs> yeah. ham in others. Yeah. Um, so I have to ask, Jesus you Christ. unwrapped it to inspect the the harness. Mm-hmm. You did uh, your your cool blow line when you were leaving uh, Vinton Charlemagne's place last time was mm-hmm. uh, you'll have a present to unwrap. Do you rewrap the harness and or do you also wrap the, the hawk of meat? Oh, you're wearing the uh, harness. He's wearing the harness. I'm wearing the harness. Your adventuring I'm the gear present. is the present. Yeah. The, harness, the harness is yeah. the wrapping. Yeah. I'm the present. Yeah, that's yep. the whole. That was the <laughs> Sorry, whole. I feel like Vinci got that. Yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I'll, ex- okay. I'll explain it to her when she's at the door. It's like I'm, I'm the present, and this is I wrapped myself. So mm-hmm. you take it off, and then and then we'll both be naked, and we do whatever naked people do. I mean, she has been naked this whole time. She's been just like hanging out, waiting while you took a fucking nap. So we'll see how this. This is and played. investigated a murder. <laughs> <laughs> investigated <laughs> tried to prevent word. one. Read two letters. Uh, cool. It would seem that you've got everything you need. Is there anything else you want to do at the castle, or are you heading over to the facade embassy? I think I've 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 put this off long enough. Like this has been, we've done like what two 
rain checks for this, I think. So yeah, uh, it's it's time to go. I'll grab uh, I'll grab some wine from the kitchen too. I mean, if you don't steal a bottle of wine, is it really a date with Vinton Charlemagne? Yeah, I've got to stay consistent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Meanwhile, butthole. Speaking of remaining consistent, you're going to see the smartest person you've met. <laughs> Largely because mm-hmm. you haven't met smart Reginald, I suspect, but you are on your way to see Falmire Pink Blossom, the smartest magic user in the world. Best wizard on the planet, no yep. question. Possibly 100%. in the multiverse. Could probably take down Xanthus. I hadn't thought of that yet, but if I get there, Jeez. that's my next question. Excellent. So I think I'm going to need like an investigation at advantage to to track her down. All of this is still happening while this sort of massive festival is happening. You know, there's envoys everywhere. There's still, you know, this, the street party is still happening. So let's see if you can track her down. I guess I would also take perception. Investigation or, would be like investi- around asking people. Perception would be if you're just out there <laughs> poking your head up over the crowd. <laughs> Yeah, he, he would just do perception with, and he'd cast guidance on himself for religious support. 14. 14? Okay, yeah, I think she's a big enough character that, you know, you're not looking for one of several people wearing the same suit. And how can you find the one who's slightly different? She's clearly, you know, making a show of things. And I think at, at this point in the festivities, probably doing minor, you know, mind reading tricks to other, you know, aristocratic folk who are around, uh, has a small group around her, um, very kind of like TV psychic, like, oh, wow, you seem vaguely mystical. And of course she plays into that. So uh, you find her surrounded by people. She's just saying, no, of course I could tell you future, but then where would that leave you with no future? only stories and everyone's like oh that's deep yeah that's 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 powerful stuff everyone is admittedly kind of drunk at this point um <laughs> and she just kind of nods knowingly and they all nod knowingly expecting her to say more she doesn't and it's one of those uncomfortably long pauses which gives her even more power because she's just happy to sit in it uh and butthole that's what you arrive to and butthole's just nodding with the rest of the crowd they may <laughs> have stopped in this pause but he's like mm, that's a good point you could be missing a whole future if you give it away whoa these are big. These are these are big brain thoughts. Okay. Uh, excuse me, envoy. If I could uh, borrow your magical expertise for a moment, I would greatly appreciate it. And she nods to you and turns against all Lee Pace. Hobbit turns so somehow head and body turn in the most kind of vaguely dismissive way possible, and she just says, "My gifts are required at the highest level of this burgeoning land." You will forgive my absence. I have foreseen it. And then she kind of puts a hand to her her uh, forehead and, and drifts away after you, uh, butthole, and says, Yes, my lord, how can I be of assistance? So I have a magical question for you, and I know, having talked to my friends, that you have your own agenda, and it may be different than mine, and that makes me sad, but I still think you're an expert, and I'd like to consult Wait. your general thoughts. I'm happy to assist, but what mean you from what your friends have said? Well, they had a talk with me because I was really thinking that, like, we should give you a job and you seem like the smartest wizard I've ever met. And then they pointed out that you seem to avoid some questions and I didn't really believe them, but then they were very convincing. And I did realize that you are an envoy from another nation, so I probably can't just think of you as, like, my best friend. It is true that I must... Protect the high forest and misty forest with my own aims and agendas, but that doesn't mean we can't be the best of palmigos. Oh, good. That's great. Okay, so I kind of need your help with this, let's just say, like, hot mess. So what kind of magic could be cast that would blow up someone's head and then get rid of their soul so you couldn't bring them back? All right, I'm going to need, I think, a persuasion check uh, from you, Ryan. She doesn't love that she's hearing this. Your friends have been telling you things. And it's definitely turning her off of the, I give you all the information up front. So this role will basically determine how big the favor she is going to ask for will be Hmm. in return. Yeah. 
He's still gonna. He, he's just auto guidance himself from the farts because he feels like religiously he's missing something here that that he has to know. That's a nat twenty. Oh yeah. Hello. We're playing that political game. A game of farts. Um. Okay. So goddamn it, nat twenty. The game of farts. You either win or you poop your pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that final season was, right? Yeah. Okay. Nat twenty. Shit. So she considers this for a second and says you know i had thought that perhaps i would need to ask for further assurances from you if your friends indeed are trying to lead you astray but there's something about you king butthole that makes me trust you implicitly in a critically successful way oh that's good i do want to be best friends yes yes well it's interesting. The question you ask is one of deep arcana. Luckily, my <laughs> skills tell me that I have this knowledge. <laughs> oh, uh, that's good. King Butthole, you're speaking about the dissolution of craniums, but also the dissolution of souls. And these are two separate things. It would seem to me that you're looking for perhaps one magical utensil that is both spoon and fork in some comical combination that is semi-functional but bad at both when what you really need to be seeking out is an individual spoon and an individual fork. No spork for you, King Butthole. Oh, I thought it was called a fapoon. <laughs> ah, regional differences... Perhaps it is for Poon. Perhaps I've been mistaken in my metaphors for years. I, I don't know. You seem smarter than me. Let's roll with your thing. Okay, so How it's not a spork. Troubling. You're saying I'm looking for two people. I got a head popper, or and I got one a soul person eater. with two spells, but it could well be two people. May I ask, what kind of person has no soul? Like or in a, this case, like what a, kind of person had no soul? I know the answers, of course, from the magics, but if oh. you... Explain it to me that I'll understand where you're coming from. That would be great. Okay. Um, I feel like you should do an insight check because he does believe that Falimar could be his best friend, but also he has been told Falimar has her own agenda that he should watch out for. Uh, and I'll let you roll it with advantage because, you know, you you still deep in your souls have your, you know, old friend tattoos aside from all the, the burning and everything else, but you, you implicitly trust the people who gave you this information. It's not like it was Reginald or someone, you know? That's a 17, which is way better than the nat one I rolled the first time. So this advantage. Try having friends is valuable. Wow, fam. you're just Everybody going like that top, in the world. tops and tails, huh? Just nat 20, critical fail. Okay. But so 17. 17. And you're trying to ascertain specifically what her... Like, how far can I trust this lady to actually yeah, give yeah, yeah. information? Because it's highly sensitive for other nations. So despite what your friends have told you, you don't actually get the sense with this question that she's digging, or you don't get the sense from this question that she has a hidden agenda. I will say this is the first time you notice that she is pretending to know things she doesn't and mm. seems to be a bit behind the ball on this. But the question seems genuine. You don't pick up any subterfuge. Um, you know, if you have a, a, you run a quick like Quinny test on this, it's like, well, would Quinny ask it this way? No, he wouldn't. And I don't get any like Quinny vibes off this. So no, it's probably a straight question. You, you don't get the sense there's anything behind this specific line of questioning. Yeah. And in his head, he's like, okay, so Quinny's a better liar than this lady. That's good to know. Um, yeah. So somebody got murdered. Uh, it's been a busy night, and there is a dead body with no head, and I tried to cast Resurrection on it, and clearly it had been magically blasted, and uh, nothing came out. And from what I could tell, the person who died is the kind of person who would definitely want to come back, because they seem to have a whole lot of like ambition and shadiness and like self-centered interests, if that makes sense. She nods. And you actually see her mask slip a little bit, because her brain is legitimately kind of tackling this puzzle. So it's kind of, you know, seeing someone who normally puts on airs actually just having a think about something or, or trying to puzzle through something. And she said, well, let's see how, how well she does it. What you thinking? <laughs> well, 
She's talking the whole time. She does not have an in- internal monologue. Oh, okay. Uh, she says, that's interesting. The kind of person you're describing seems to me like the very kind of person who might interfere with or rather consort with the types of dark ethereal powers that would indeed consume a soul or perhaps demand one as price, perhaps as an assurance, or perhaps he just willingly, or she or they, I don't know. I mean, I do know because the power's magic, but if I didn't, perhaps they willed their soul to someone. We do this all the time. All the more mortal beings tend to engage in their wedding ceremonies and pledge souls to one another. And of course, there are the warlocks who literally pledge souls in some cases. I've heard of the soul coins of Avernus. There are many different ways one could lose one's soul. But if they are indeed a an active social climber, it does beg the question if perhaps they over-invested with something without perhaps realizing the cost this is something that we mystical types contend with quite frequently, unfortunately. So they like took out a bad loan with like a demon or something and then got screwed. Yes, it's very important to read the, the fine print on contracts, but it may not be a demon. There are many different creatures who, who seek ownership of souls. They're incredibly valuable currency and incredibly powerful forms of magic uh they can power great things or terrible things so all i'm saying is that if you attempted to bring back someone who would by all accounts want to remain alive to see their plans through perhaps they did indeed pay a price they weren't quite aware they were set to pay they didn't realize a tab had been started and were unprepared for it to come due so to lean in on this tab thing so let's say like I have a dead body. I've Okay, I've blown the metaphor already, so we're going to go literal. <laughs> Let's say I have the body. Is there some way for me to find out, like, the restaurant they were eating at or, like, who had, who did it? <laughs> <laughs> I am afraid that my arcane powers do not reach into the realm of crime scene investigation. There is no... CSI, High Forest or Misty Forest. I can tell you about magic, but unfortunately the more mundane tracking of where people went and had their little num-nums is not really within my purview. Okay, that so if said, I brought you to the body, you couldn't say who ripped the soul out of it? No, not likely, unless it had recently happened and the magic was still there. I could, of course, you say recent, the is that like four hours or is that like two days? Well, look, if if someone went up to the body when it was alive and went, Kalima, and reached into its chest and pulled out the soul, I mean, maybe, but if this pledging of the soul occurred some time ago, I don't know that I can be of much assistance. I will, of course, take a look at the body, though. Now you can roll me an insight check. Nat 20. See, now that feels like Quinny. <laughs> wow. That's another nat 20. I appreciate the offer, but it, I mean, if you're not going to know who, who signed the contract, then I don't really need you. As you said, you're not a CSI person, so I don't want you to like stumble into a scene. Also, I mean, it, I don't want it to seem like maybe you did something bad. That could look really bad on the forest, you know, if it seems like you were in some way involved. Sometimes people wander around and see and touch something without realizing it, and then it looks like they left fingerprints, and then they can get, like, framed up and stuff. So, like, I don't want that for you. You seem like a nice person. She looks at her fingers in horror, having never realized that fingerprints were a thing. She said, oh, of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, do, you think, do you think we're friends? Do you really think that? I would like to believe that we are friends, although it seems that the company you keep is quite opposed to me and my skills. Jealousy, yeah, I, think they... I think, wears a cloak named Quinny. I like your vibe, and you've been very helpful. But at the same time, 
based on this conversation, I can tell that you pretend to have a lot of information you don't have, and you pretend your powers do a lot of things that I don't think they do. But, like, you realize you have intrinsic value as a person, right? You don't just need to be all of these fake abilities to get people to like you. Like, you seem like a pretty nice person deep down inside if you can get over this this insecurity that's haunting you. Can you roll a persuasion check? God, I love the first half of that statement. I know. Laura and I were both like, <laughs> damn! And then oh, you were shit. like, no, it's okay. You're a real person. And we're like, oh, he's being nice. <laughs> Fine, I guess. I'm just both gunning for another dead envoy. <laughs> 24. <sighs> shit. She considers this and sort of nods and says, thank you. That is incredibly kind. I am aware of my own value. I am incredibly powerful. I have kept my two realms safe amidst all manner of horrors. I will admit, though, it is difficult in a world of magics to know exactly who is packing what kind of magical heat, as it were. Anyone from, and she just gestures broadly and happens to gesture to Bucky and be like, that small dragon child could have magical powers and we would never know. Bucky waves enthusiastically. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's got magic powers. Bucky's like, a, got a whole bunch See, of stuff going on. This is on. what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> it leads to a necessity of keeping folks a bit at arm's length and of perhaps dialing up a mystique in order to try and seem more powerful than one is. I have the utmost faith in my abilities and, and myself, but those abilities mean little in a world where a god has been raised by a nation of wizards and can fly around destroying cities or raising gardens at his whims. All this to say, I appreciate you considering me on a on a, a, a personal level. But who I am as a person doesn't matter one iota if the people I care about can get nuked from space by a wizard god. And then she kind of nods, or like narrows her eyes and kind of tilts her head a little bit and she says, and on that note, King Butthole, since I do consider us friends, and since your words have touched me deeply, <laughs> your distinct lack of magical capabilities in this nation is of great concern. We have moved from an age of sword and shield into an age, I suspect, of wizard fights as the planteers grow more powerful. It is nice you have your dragon boy. You need more. You need more magics, and soon, I fear. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, because here's the thing. I don't actually think we're even going to be able to get enough wizards together to be able to really go to war in a whole wizard fight way, but we got to have at least a wall of magic to be able to hold and then try to hit them with something surprising. So, yeah, do you got any ideas on where we could get, I don't know, a whole shitload of wizards? Um, I got Adamantine. I got, like, a couple of priests. We We don't have a standing army, so it's pretty welcoming in terms of trade. Money's going to show up soon. So, I mean, that's probably like our primary resource other than human decency, but no one seems to give a shit about that. Well, there's an old saying from the, the Forgotten Realms philosopher Voltaire <laughs> <laughs> that in the absence of a god, it would be necessary to invent one. And then she smiles a little bit... Um, just gives you a bit of a quirky smile and says, I think you might know a little bit about that. If you can't find enough wizards, then perhaps you need to make them. You seem to be building something quite wondrous and strange here. Perhaps rather than doing it the way others have in the past, you should do it in your own way. Speak to the, the magical council that you care most about. I've seen some tremendous magic missile work here tonight. Speak to the wizards you know. See if perhaps they can point you in the right direction. But it would seem to me that if you have a bunch of adamantine and no army, plus a rather admittedly bad reputation on the global front because of the whole armies of the undead thing, 
You'll likely find the proper schools of magic rather inhospitable to you these days, but you seem rather good at building and growing yourself, so perhaps that's an angle. Yeah, I mean, I could talk to my local collection of weirdos, but I got, like, a counter offer I would like you to consider. Just think about it. Mm. Sounds like your big concern in terms of wizard fights and flying insane Captain Plantier. I'm just going to be a little more blunt on you because I don't really need to do the metaphor Oh, yes, thing. he's awful, isn't he? He's a nightmare, and he's a big problem. <laughs> if, if I were to send any of the wizards from Asgard to go start a wizard school, it's kind of obvious that I'm going to use those wizards against Captain Plantier because I uh, helped the ex-wife he was abusing escape and then she made me into a god. We don't need to go down that path. But like, <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> also, a car fought the Plantiers openly for years. There's a lot weighing against you on that front. Uh, yeah, I know. So it's almost like the best situation would be someone who has an aligned interest in terms of stopping the Plantiers running a magic school that could be secretly and in an ongoing way funneling wizards here, but isn't me saying, hey, I made my wizard school. Go punch him, Plantiers. Perhaps a very powerful wizard who understands the art of subterfuge. And it could be a political ally who's also good at appearing distance and has a certain mystique to try to make sure nobody really knows what's going on with the school. I am mystiquious. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just saying, maybe if you're the most mystiquious... You could be the most educationalist. Hmm. Oh. King Butthole, until this matter with whether or not your nation of Asgard is brought into the Lord's Alliance or not is resolved, I cannot appear partial to you or your cause, but I will think on this. This would resolve some of my problems as well, though it creates a number of new ones, including... Where the ever-loving fuck one would find such a thing. But it may be possible. Perhaps solve your murder and make sure your nation isn't destroyed by that beautiful woman and her army first. And then perhaps we can talk. Yeah, that makes sense. I really scared her with a deer thing, so I may have bought some time to solve <laughs> this. So I'm going to work on that. Oh, yes, I understand. Um, it, it's very clear how scared she is. You understand she left and is constructing trebuchets outside now, yes? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. She's going to do her own thing. Like She's got to do what she's got to do, but we're going to talk it out. We had a cool time. Mm-hmm. I do hope this works out for you, King Butthole. Perhaps we can make mysterious plans together. Until then, good luck with your murder, unless you want to show me the body. Also, who is it? <laughs> yeah, those are fun questions. And you know what? Maybe if we go down the line and we start building a whole conspiracy together, then we can start being a little more open with secrets. But right now, I'm not a part of the Lord's Alliance, so I think i got to play this kind of close to the vest, you know? To Che, King Butthole. Well, I don't know Che, but I hope you have a nice night with him. What? And <laughs> then she wanders <laughs> off. <laughs> So, Butthole, you've got perhaps more, more questions than answers. Prison ghosts may continue to haunt the hallowed halls of, of Asgard. Just following uh, Fallon Meyer around. <laughs> she, she's got a pocket ghost? Yeah. Oh, no, my alarm is going again. Um, oh, you suck. <laughs> this is really bad for my self-esteem. I don't know why I picked this one. Why did I pay yeah. $1.20 for this? Purchasing this was a big mystique. <laughs> oh, you suck. I don't think you're using that word correctly. Um, <laughs> Butthole, having uh, received all this information um, from Valmeyer, is there anything else you would do? Or what's kind of your next step? Obviously, you've got folks investigating the murder. Uh, you've got a couple questions sort of up in the air. Butthole's got to trust them to do the investigation. He's not in a place where he can actually be explicitly involved in this whole thing. He needs to receive a report and not have any sense of bias about said report. He also needs to be here to make sure that it's clear that this is a priority, not random weird machinations on this night when it's a night of ambassadors and culture. The thing he would do is send a message back to the palace that he needs to convene the wizards in the next day or two because he's now living in a world he hates where he's like well i have to bet we're not all dead in two days and if we're not all dead in two days then i'm gonna need this wizard plan because apparently i needed this a week ago <laughs> so fuck 
I'll bet on my friends to make us not die and really hope those trebuchets aren't a problem because there's not much I could do about those. So let's let's celebrate the fireworks show. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those incredibly sad things where it's like the camera just pans up behind you in silhouette, you know, shoulders slightly slumped as fucking magic missiles go off. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Quinny, you are making your way to mm-hmm. Vinton Charlemagne's. Um, we talked a little bit about Chompy. The only other question I have for you before you kind of arrive at her door is around whether you want to try and do anything with Chompy first or if you're just going to kind of kick off the unit or what's, what's your plan? Yeah, I want, to, uh, I want to question, so to speak, Chompy first. My okay. plan is to um, coax him with the uh, hawk of meat. I mean, I brought him something before. He's friendly towards me, so I'm hoping to, you know, get him down into like the front lawn or whatever and just give him some scritches, but I will also like feed him, but also I will have the medallion of thought in my hand, um, secreted in my hand. I know sure. she'll Vinton will likely be watching me or something like that, but just to probe and see if I can discern anything from Chompy and what Chompy has experienced or seen during his stay here in our nation. Okay, so we can just so jump ahead scared. to yeah, we can just jump ahead to to your arrival. Then um, I've rolled for Chompy. Um, Chompy sees you coming. Um, Chompy's just kind of doing that classic smaug, uh, circling <laughs> the uh, the Misty Mountain. So as soon as you kind of get within range and hold up the the ham hock, Chompy yeah. knows what's up. That's a fucking ham hock. What, what's he gonna do? Not eat it? So um, swoops in for a landing. Kind of. Uh, I I was. Wyverns are such a weird sort of physical construct. I love the idea of like wings but no arms. So the landing is <laughs> is literally like any sort of massive bird having to just sort of skitter its feet oh, when it yeah. lands. Yeah. You know, it's got this giant serpentine body, but just like little scrabbly claws and talons <laughs> as it kind of tries to pull itself up to you. And uh, yeah, Chompy kind of ducks his head down towards you and kind of looks looks at you, looks at the meat, looks at you, tilts his head. I say, hey, buddy, yeah, yeah, this is for you. Uh, and I'll, I'll hold it out and say, here, eat up. If there's a wing, like a little claws at the top of the wing, fist equivalent of a yes, <laughs> uh, you see that, and uh, Chompy just goes to town on on that that ham hawk, uh, and yeah, you can you can give him scritches. It's not great because it's scales, but, sure. You know yeah. the, the intent is there, right? Um, yeah, I'm hoping what what we have here is a situation of like doing something that like let's say like a dog doesn't like while it's like licking peanut butter kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah. I've it's given like, you a treat. Fine. And now we're just going to do a little probing here. I yeah, yes. Yeah. I, I need to know what you know, Chompy. Okay, so you My use the medallion of thought. Yeah, my mind and your mind. Yes. I have the original card that you gave me when you... When you t- I, it's getting blinded by the light. It's only yeah. getting worse. There we go. Oh, it's great. Wow. Uh, so it says... Um, it's free to basically uh, read surface thoughts, which I'm, ass- which I'm assuming are like, meat, 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 meat. Um, yes, correct. <laughs> To go deeper uh, requires a wisdom save on uh, on behalf of the the target. Um, however, I don't have the DC on this. Is it my like casting ability? Shall we yeah, say? Yeah, I would. I'd be happy to go with that. Okay, so the DC is sixteen. I need a I need a chompy wisdom save. Sorry, I'm sure you have a chompy statue I ready to go. Do. Oh so shit! We're okay, good, we're good to go, baby. <laughs> oh man. So Chompy rolled pretty well, but your spell DC is very high. So okay. unfortunately, Chompy, well, I mean, unfortunately for me, fortunately for you, uh, okay. Chompy fails the, the save. Uh, so this allows me to gain insight into its reasoning, its emotional state, and uh, it can do uh, an intelligence check contested by my intelligence um, to end the spell. But I don't know if it knows that this is happening to it. I don't Chompy knows. think yet. Okay. Um, so what are you specifically looking for here? You're looking for, because th- that's a, a pretty wide range of stuff and I'm happy to, yeah. to, you've passed a check. So like you have access. I'm just curious, like what Quinny's really zeroing in on. Uh, I'm zeroing in on any, I think um, probably um, emotionally heightened moments for Chompy in the past few, gosh, in the past 24 hours, I guess. Gotcha. Um, um you know. Okay. Yep. So has Chompy been under any kind of stress from 
combat or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're getting shades of of tremendous anxiety uh, during okay. the the attack uh, on the um, on the the embassy. Um, oh, and okay. Yep. Kind of through the you know as, as you're you're kind of getting these these vague impressions, you hear the equivalent of what well, well finally uh and then soon thereafter uh, oh no it was so close um seem to be intermingled with the the attack this is a this is a voice i'm hearing yeah you're kind of getting a sense of like chompy's internal oh, okay not kind of something thoughts. chompy heard but this is chompy yeah yeah, yeah. Voice. it's it's, Got it. okay. it's very clear from kind of the 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 sort of um visions you're getting um, and, and from the, the, you know, overpowering mood ring vibes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, so tremendous stress, uh, tremendous relief. Okay. That tracks with kind of these moments yep. that I already know about. Uh, and then just some, uh, some latent anxiety fairly recently followed by a uh, tremendous relief just now. Okay. And if that's the spirit the the brightest spot in the past 24 hours that tells me then that that was as to best i can tell the only dangerous or stressful situation chompy's been involved in in the past 24 hours is the one that i know about already the attack on the house yes yeah but mm -hmm. when you look at the if you're looking at sort of the ecg tracker of you know where the spikes are and everything else mm -hmm. Uh, there was a tremendous degree of calm around almost everything and then just wild stress about this. And the stress seems almost disproportionately large um, right at the, I mean, obviously you can't pinpoint it, but no. Chompy was really fucking stressed out about that attack. Okay. Uh, can you roll Chompy me an is like insight a, check? Yeah. Chompy is a warlock mount a warlock knight mount i'm assuming chompy's been tempered in some pretty hairy shit uh what was the um skill you were looking for insight uh, i would take insight i mean you, you could make the case for investigation if you want it because this is basically quinty just trying to puzzle through what this could could mean uh i mean investigation would be great but insight i think is knowing people knowing mm psyches and like people's motivations and yeah, things unfortunately like that. can't ask any clarifying questions so they're yeah <laughs> so Unfortunately, I'm going to go insight. That's a total of 16, though. I rolled 16. And 16's insight not bad. is plus zero. Yeah, 16 is pretty good. Chompy was seemingly, seems to be very scared of something. There seems to be an outlier factor that okay. has caused Chompy a tremendous amount of emotional strife, both positive and negative, uh, recently. Mm. Okay. I'll, um, which does seem, the... and sorry to your point earlier about insight and everything else, um, as you're thinking through like, this is a Warlock Knight's mount, that does feel very strange. Also, particularly yeah. given that Vinted enjoyed the hell out of that fight, yeah. it doesn't quite track. Okay. Um, I will, um, I'll end the spell uh, channeling through the Medallion of Thought, discreetly pocketed, just trying to be aware that I'm likely being watched. Um, and, uh, just kind of cradle, cradle Chompy's head kind of under the jaw. Just like, what got you spooked, buddy? What's got you all scared? I don't expect him to answer, but it's just kind of what's on my mind. Uh, and, uh, he just like headbutts you Oof. <laughs> and then the headbutt kind of becomes like a, an affectionate nuzzling. He's just very large and you're very small. Right. Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Oh, I got scared for a second there. You're not trying to kill me. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. No. No. You're. You're fine. You're fine. I don't know what. I don't know what that was, but you're fine now. <clears throat> I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go say hi to your mom. <laughs> Just, I just go to the, the front door and knock. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Hamstra at El Hamstring on Twitter, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra, and Dum Dums and Dragons artwork is by Del Borovic, who can be found at delborovic.com. Our theme songs are And Now for That Massive Coronary and Skipping Through the Orchestra Pit Part 1 by Peter Gresser, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R. 
Noir, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. And tune in next week for more Dum Dums and Dragons. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christopher Little, George Dolby, Richard Cranium, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Logan, Fire Unfriendly, Grandma Likes D&D, Alan, Stabby Stranger, Glitch Trick, Flynn1138, Alorain Okapi, Schrodinger's Pepper, Guy Edwards, Madre de Gatos, Lady Maiden, Garbo Ape, Locke, Sam Schaefer, Waffle Marine, Dagger Rain, Rob L, Dia De Los Hoodless, Squishy Werewolf, Remy, Funky Head, Nomad, the Wise Paladin of the Badlands, Accent Therapeutic Services in Florence, Kentucky, Lale, Shulzari, Gus Schreider, The Long Family, Jordan Oliver, Richard Wright, Brittany Fenwick, Alex Parr, Old Man Mojo, Dragonfly, The Body Barrelers, Megan Werner, A Man Out of Time, Curtis at FingertechRobotics.com, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you.